spine backwards. And it's to the edge of the ear. And you're just skimming it up. Go on the air of caution when you're doing this. You can always go back and take some more hair off after. And I like to use the little whiskers as a nodule, as a guideline. So you can see how much extra hair he's missing there. Pull for over the shoulders. So I just want to spend a couple minutes. This is a real easy place for you to see too. You can see how much black is there. So all that hair really has to go. So again, you're always going to pull. So you don't have to go quickly. I feel like you need to be very, very methodical when you're stripping. And you definitely need to make sure that you're not going in and snapping. So if you see these videos when they're doing this, they're hurting the dog, they're breaking the hair, and they're hurting their own wrist. Just gonna use my thinning shears. This is a great little tip if they're sitting down, you can get this little spot in the middle. I find it very handy. Brush it slicker brush, brush it straight down, and I'm gonna use a little pair of curved scissors. And I'm just going to clear the very bottom of his foot. You just take a wide carding knife and you drag out the undercoat on the eyebrows. This is gonna make a huge difference on all of your commercial dogs and show dogs included. Do this before they go into the bathtub. Huge game changer for you. You can see by dragging that undercoat out of those eyebrows how incredible that looks. You can see how he's got some killer eyebrows. Follow these tips and you're gonna get beautiful head trims every time. So we have these little attachments. They just slide right on the clipper. We use that with the 40 blade underneath of it. Look at all that hair that's coming off in just a very short amount of time. You can see what a beautiful job that does. And it also leaves a beautiful amount of hair. So we're just going to go around. I feel like you guys really need to spend time. Go slow and steady on these. Always working in a little round fashion. If you notice, I'm not taking a ton of hair off of it. And also, I work on it a lot. I work on her face every week. You know, I'm just scissoring it softly over the top of the ears. But just remember that you have choices here. So I'm going to finish up her face, and then we're just going to come back and give a quick overview. And get your face scissored. What a good puppy. Very first haircut. He's only five months old. What a good little. His name is Biggie. And he only weighs three pounds. Best little guy, Biggie. I'm so proud of you, buddy. Look at you. Look at those ears. I don't want to trim them, though. <gasps> So I use my thinning shears when I do that. And I find that the thinning shears really put a nice finish on the face. So everything that you've already bulked out and put on there, if you just spend a couple of extra minutes with your thinning shears, it's gonna make all the difference in the world. But remember, especially in commercial grooming, the people really wanna have a nice pretty face. So spend the time there, that's your money shot. So you can see how those thinners are really making a nice little difference. And I'm going to take my little curve shears again. And I'm just going to dust the end and create a line. Now, I'm creating a little bit bigger bevel now than I would, say, example, on a commercial dog. Because this is a specific style that we're going for. But you can see the line is created. I put the weight back down, and now I'm just going to go back around, and I'm going to follow that curved line. And that is how you create that bell bottom look that the Asian fusion always has. So you want to go underneath first with your curved scissors. So you can see we've set a line there. Once you have your line set, now it's just a matter of going back and dusting your ends. And I'm always working from the bottom up. And that's how you're going to get that roundness 
on your bevel. Be patient too, they take time. The tips of his ears with a wall of Rivera on a number nine blade. So remember their head is a, a rectangle. So you want to take the top of the head and I kind of point it downwards. And I'm going to take my chunkers and I'm just going to go flat on the top of the head. And I'm going to take the side of the cheeks off. Now you want to make this quite flat. Just tip the head down, take your thinning shears, and you're just going from the outside corner of the eye to the outside corner of the nose. See how we are elevating all of these bellows. This is a really good trick. It's called skimming. I can do it with a variety of numbers of blades. Today I'm going to do it with a 30 blade on my wall of Rivera. Okay, so really what I'm doing, I'm just, it's skimming. I'm just, I have the dog where I wanted to do where I wanted to stand, and I can just methodically go. Now, this is the way I have personally found it most effective. Number two is a great length on them. It's short, easy to maintain, he can go to the lake, it's spring. I'm not particularly worried about it being perfect by any stretch. I'm just getting the excess hair off before he goes into the bath. So there's our boy Winston all groomed up in his little tootie bear. Just to recap, we did his whole body with the blue attachment, the dark blue attachment. Number two with our wall of Rivera. This is Julia, and if you haven't subscribed to GGTV, go subscribe to them now, because they're the one and only, and they're the best. So we got him pretty much all finished on his body. This is a great trick I want to share with you. It's called scissor over comb. You're going to use the wide end of your comb and your fingers. This takes a little bit of practice, but you see you've got a little bit of tracking here and there. If you just run the wide end of the comb, I'll try to do it real slow for you, and you just keep cutting over top of the comb, it will get rid of all that tracking for you. It just takes a couple of minutes, and once you get to practice on it, it's a great trick. And if you go in and you feel the last rib, go one finger behind the last rib and you go on the hair of caution and you're going to go with the hair. On a cool you go against, on these guys we go with the hair. Get a little bit tight. You can see I'm just taking it off fairly quickly the first time. Take it off till it's nice and smooth. And you want to get the inside all the way down to the foot. When I start getting closer in here, I just kind of go with the hair down. thumb under there just for safety. Tail, I like to pull the tail straight down. You want to work on an inverted V. Start lower and then go in higher. So the first swipe is just straight. 
Then I just want to spread the tail here just a little. If you take your clipper in sideways once and sideways twice, it's perfect every time. So then I lift up the tail. You've got to be very careful when you're coming in under here. One quick tip that I'm gonna give you is that this should actually be a triangle. You want it to think of a little chrysanthemum, so they should have a nice round face. If you shave this, it is awful, so don't. You're just gonna clear the eye with your thinning shear or your chunkers, whichever you prefer, but do not, do not shave it. Poodle feet. Everybody hates poodle, so you're just gonna hold the foot straight in front of you. I like to create a line and just hold it there so I don't wanna shave too high. And I always clear the top of the foot first. Pull all the hairs out from each, around each toe. I find that it's really handy when you're clipping feet, if you just pull the toe hair first, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. never had a haircut before, schnauzers are very nervous when they first start. So put your clipper on and just take it and desensitize them with the clipper. Just rub it and talk to them calmly and quietly. You can tell he's a little bit nervous. Rub it on his face and reassure him. I'm just giving him a little bit of a clip. I also give him lots of breaks in the middle. What a good boy. You can tell how great he's doing. There's that little baby boy with his first little eyebrow. Look at how dirty you are. Look at the color that is coming off of this one. That thing screaming dogs is easy. They it are ain't. Wrong. <laughs> they are wrong. Oh, this is gonna be a major makeup work today. Wow. Check out the inside of her feet. She has rocks in her feet. The poor thing. That's just some straight white and she's gonna need at least two good scrubs. <laughs> now pull the skin tight here, and you want to take nice long strokes. And you sort of just run it straight off the eye. That's the part you need to be the most careful on. I like just go slow and steady. Okay, and then you want to check the base of the ear. <clears throat> you want the line from the corner of the eye to the outside corner of the ear. Okay, girl. girl. Who's the best girl? Do you love Bathy? No. Join us live on GGTV on YouTube. We are grooming this beautiful girl, Sparkle. She's TikTok's most popular poodle at the moment. She's got 100,000 views. Thank you.
got some more work to do on these legs. And I'm always scissoring a little bit, then I comb and I lift. I comb and I lift. I always use a bit of scissor spray as well when I'm working on them. I like to use a curve on the bottom of the bevel when I'm putting the bottom of the bevel into the leg. I find it's uh, more effective. Some people use a straight, it just depends. That's what I prefer. I like to just dust the ends of the ears. I do them on a regular basis just because they get nasty. But then, I just don't like it like that. I like to be a bit smoother. If you just take your 40 blade, and again, be really, really careful when you're going in there. But I'm just skimming in those little ends. It makes a huge difference. I really hope that you guys had a great time today and really enjoyed having the modern trim. I'm going to come back with a lot of poodle creams. Thank you guys so much for your likes, shares, and subscribe. GGT. I always use my thinners and my chunkers, tipping the head and I'm creating a bang line. You don't want to go straight over the eyes. This took me a long time. I had a real problem with this. So this is where your line is going to be. So I'm just going to hold the side of her face and you want it to be round as well. Make sure you're thinking round. So I'm just going to take those chunkers and create a line up the side of the face. So one key important fact about this breed is they need to be robust. What does that mean? They need to have a big spring of ribs. So when I set the top line up, I'm gonna set the top line straight, and you wanna carry that right into the tail. But then what I do after I've set the top line, I go back with my curve shear now, and I'm gonna scissor over top of the rib. So I'm gonna give him a good round rib. Super important fact about this piece, you need to keep the rib. Remember the schnauzer's head is a rectangle, so equal parts here and equal parts here, here and here. So I just turn my body onto the side here. I'm gonna take this chunker straight down the side of the face. You wanna be careful that you're keeping it straight there and you're not bending it in or bending it out. You wanna take it straight down. On this side, I have to turn my body this way. And I'm just going to the corner of the eye. little hairy in the tub. We do a ton of work in the bathtub. We've got our Le Pooch brush and we're just working through all that hair. If you guys give this a try, it's gonna work awesome. Another little thing that I really like about it, I feel like the dogs get cleaner, number one. that The hair slides out a heck of a lot easier with a bit of shampoo and conditioner in there. When you're pulling, you're gonna always use your shoulder, okay? And you're just gonna take, you're gonna keep your wrist tight. It's not, you're not going in there all crazy and ripping it off and snapping. All you're doing is hurting the dog and hurting your shoulder and your elbow. So just, it's very methodical and quiet. We're just gonna lift the hair with your thumb and you're just pulling it straight back. And I'm not working in the same spot. I'm just, you can see there's no 
screaming and carrying on. It's not painful in any way, shape, or form. I, I put my scissor on the dog. I'm very sure about where I'm placing it. You know, it's hard for me to ever groom a dog without hearing my mom in the back of my head because she was a groomer as well. And she'd always do something. I'll share it with you because maybe I'll help. And it's called place cut, place cut. So she'd always just make you place the scissors, cut. Place called place cut, place cut. So she'd always just make you place the scissors, cut. Place called place cut, place cut. So she'd always just make you place the scissors, cut. Place the scissors, cut. Place the scissors, cut. I was actually that slow back in the day, so.